right, excuse my basic model, I'm just doing it so it's quick when it comes to the computation time. Um, if you want to know how to do it properly, look at my previous videos on how to sketch um, over a picture. When I've done it before to sketch over a car. So the first thing to do is go into Tools and Add-ins and make sure you've actually enabled your Flow Simulation package. Um, a lot of the time it comes off as default for some reason. So once we've done that, we can go into the wizard and start this process. So again, name your project. For me, it's just an example for YouTube and a fairly basic one at that. So we can go next, where we choose our units. For me, we're choosing SR. You can choose whatever you want. It doesn't make a difference. After this, you'll choose an external analysis, obviously. It'd be internal if it's something like a pipe. We want to exclude internal space and all that kind of thing. We want to do it in the X direction for our reference axis, because obviously it's a car. You look at the direction we're using. Um, X will mean it um, yeah, flows front to back, back to front, not top to bottom. Um, again, it's a car, so we're interested in air. So we add that in and click next. Uh, so we want the velocity of the airflow in the x direction, and for me it's minus because if you look at this x, if it was a positive, it'd be running from the boot to the bonnet, and obviously that would be the car going in reverse. Uh, I put the resolution up just so I get uh, richer results, really. So once we've done this, we can set our computational domain. And basically what this domain is, is what the computer focuses on to run its calculations. Obviously it's massively too big for my model. Um, it would take a massive amount of time, which is just wasted. So we'll shrink it down just for envelopes of the model. Um, I'm making sure I enclose the road, well, say the road, the kind of platform I've got on, which is there to emulate a road. Um, for things like ground effect and whatnot. So make sure you shrink it down, just cover the areas you're actually interested in. Because it will save you a lot of time when you come to running the simulation. Once this is done, you can set goals. So it's a car, so the things I'm interested in are drag and downforce. So force in X, force in Y, and that's an overall force. So we set those, we're happy with that, tick. Um, and then we can run the simulation. So this will bring up a program in the background, um, and basically while it will solve everything in the computational domain. This will take a varying amount of time, depending on how good your computer is, how complex your model is. Um, whether you did things that exclude internal features and that at an earlier stage in the wizard. So we'll just wait for this to complete now. Right, now that's done, we can close it. And we get into the interesting things. We can look at our results. So the first one is a cut plot, which will basically show you information of a cross section of your model. So you can change it, things like pressure, temperature, airspeed, velocity, all that kind of thing. So I'm looking at pressure, and I'm going to look at ISO lines to begin with. Um, there's all different types of methods for displaying the data. Um, ISO lines are one, although I actually prefer um, what's coming next. So contours I find is um, easier to understand. So here we go, look, we can see the areas of high pressure around the bumper um, and also just where the roof starts as well. We can see where that emanates out. So quite a useful tool, really. Uh, surface plots, as the name suggests, it plots the same thing but on the surface of your object. So more useful if it's not a kind of 2D thing like I've got here. When I say 2D, where it's like a constant kind of shape all the way across its width. So we highlight all the surfaces we're actually interested in. And we click OK. And that will show us the distribution of pressure. Again, you can do it with airspeed, velocity, temperature, everything. So we can see we're getting that high pressure region on that front bumper um, and the front of the car. So it's a really interesting tool. Finally, we go to flow trajectories. Um, for this, I'll always choose a plane where I want the airflow emanating from, and I'll choose it in front of the car. This is just choosing uh, the density of the airflow, so 200 is fairly high. I like lines of arrow arrows because I think it looks um, the most useful, and again I'm choosing pressure. So I'm running this and it's already solved. So this is how the airflow goes over the car, and we can then go to animation to actually see it.
So here we go, this is how the Airflow Interactive Art model. However, because it's fully enveloped, you actually can't see very well what's going on. So, what I often do is change the computational domain. So I bring it actually into the car itself, so you can then see a bit of a cross-section. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So because you've changed the computational domain, we have to rerun the uh, yeah or this program to solve it. It shouldn't take as long now because you've reduced your computational envelope. So again, we wait. Again, something you don't have to do. I just like to do it because, it, um, in my opinion, I think it's clearer. Right, so we run this again by clicking show, and when we click animate, you should find it's easier to see what the airflow is doing. So we click play, and there we go. So you see again we're getting that high pressure region in front of the car and the low pressure afterwards. Again we play the same thing from the rear, and you see how that airflow interacts with the model. You can run this lots of times, changing different things in flow trajectory. So you can change the density of these lines uh, to you know a thousand, two thousand. It give you more kind of rich data. Again, we look at our goal plots that we set earlier. So you want to look at both of them, and that'll show you our normal force in x, normal force in y. So downforce and drag. Again, it can be useful if you're doing some kind of academic study. Um, So going back into flow trajectories, all the things you can change. So I always like doing lines of arrows, but you can also do things like spheres. Um, and again, we're going to change the density from 200 to 1,000. So it takes much longer to solve. So here we go, exactly the same thing, but just a different way of showing it. And if we animate that, we get something that looks really interesting. So here we go. So this is the airflow particles interacting with our model. Brilliant. Well, that's everything. I hope it helps. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know, just leave a message. Um, yeah, and I'll get back to you. Anything else you want to know? Anything else you want me to go over again? Perfect. Cheers.